And so if you want to go in your booklets to the next section, which is called uh, Sensory Toys, Fidgets, and Other Tools, I think Ashley gave us a great run into uh, why it is important. So we're going to give you some definitions. I'm going to give you a little bit of an introduction. And Diana and I are going to give this session together uh, as she's that one, uh, that one. So uh, we're going to do this session together. Uh, I'm going to kind of give you the introduction and conclusion. And Diane's going to walk you through some of these different things because, I mean, Growing up, your favorite part of uh, school probably was show and tell, wasn't it? Getting your hands on things, being able to talk about things, those are always a great thing. And, uh, you know, some of these things that we look at as kind of mystifying or some of these things that we look at as maybe kind of, well, are these recent things, are these new things, newfangled things, are actually things that we've been using for a long time in different ways, uh, but we didn't realize what they were uh, as fidget toys or as... Uh, sensory toys or visual schedules or such. And so we want to take a little bit of the mystery out of it as well as help you see some of these things and find how you can use them in your classroom. And the great thing about these things are many of them are of very low cost. Some of them are no cost. If you can find the right materials online and if you have a printer and you have a laminator, uh, there are things that will last you forever. And so we want to go through some of those with you this morning. So just as an introduction, uh, I have here at the top as Voltaire said, now, uh, if you know anything about history, you know anything about Voltaire, uh, Voltaire was a great man. Uh, he was not a man who loved the Lord. Uh, in fact, he said, in 100 years, there'll be no more Bibles that will be printed. Uh, and if you uh, know your history, the Trinitarian Bible Society bought his house uh, years later and now print Bibles uh, where he once lived. And so uh, Voltaire, not a great man, but this is a great quote, okay? Uh, so uh, full disclosure, not a great man, great quote. And this is the quote, if you wish to converse with me, define your terms. If you wish to converse with me, define your terms. Uh, meaning this, is that what one word means to one person may not mean the same to someone else. And so we want to make sure that we uh, understand our definitions. I can tell you that when I was growing up as a Lutheran, uh, I would say that I was saved by grace. But the definition of saved by grace as a Lutheran was much different than what I realized the Bible said uh, when I got saved. That was uh, a huge thing. And so I was saying the same thing that other people were. But had different definitions, and so uh, we want to make sure that we kind of understand exactly what we're talking about when we talk about some of these things that we already broached in the last session. So, first of all, sensory toys. I'm going to read these through for you several times just to give you the definition. Uh, I should have put them on the uh, television right there, but in the meantime, I'll just give them to you out loud, and I'll repeat them a few times. Sensory toys. Here's just a layman's definition, if you will. This is uh, our take on it. A tool that is specifically designed to stimulate uh, one or more of the senses. A tool that is specifically designed to stimulate one or more of the senses. And if you have a fidget toy, uh, you can feel it, uh, you can watch it. Uh, these are uh, ways that your senses are being stimulated. Uh, a chew necklace. Uh, you know, we talked a little bit about how uh, AJ and others uh, sometimes will chew on their clothing. What is that? That's it. Uh, looking for a tactile response. And so uh, a sensory toy could be something like a chew necklace around that they could chew on uh, without ruining their clothes. And we kind of went through a, a season of that 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 was uh, not so great. And so uh, that's a big, big help. So a sensory toy is a tool that is specifically designed to stimulate one or more of the senses. Next, visual schedules. Visual schedules. This is this. A, this is what it is. A graphic representation of scheduled tasks or activities. A graphic representation of scheduled tasks or activities. And again, we're used to these things. Some of us have calendars in our offices or in our homes that are already printed, but this is just kind of taking that to the next level uh, and being able to expand on something that we're already familiar with in a way that's really able to connect with a young person. So a visual schedule is a graphic representation <laughs> of scheduled tasks or activities. And then finally is manipulatives. Manipulatives. Now you say, oh, so you're supposed to be manipulative. Okay, I get it. So that may, you know, that may take some of you a little bit off there. Uh, but what is a manipulative? And, and this is important. It's a physical tool that allows a person to explore a concept with a hands-on approach. A physical tool that allows a person to explore a concept with a hands-on approach. A physical tool that allows a person to explore a concept with a hands-on approach. It is not an object lesson. If you were to call it an object lesson, it would be an object lesson that you give to the child. For instance, we were right. talking about this a few days ago. Uh, it would be uh, kind of a neat thing if you were teaching on Jesus being the light of the world that you bring in a light bulb. And uh, you can uh, take that light bulb and use it as an object lesson that Jesus Christ is the light of the world. But that's not a manipulative. That, mm -hmm. that is an object lesson. That is an object. 
And, and by the way, that's a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not discounting it at all. It is good. But the next step, the next level of that, using it as a manipulator, would be to take that light bulb and let the kids touch it. Now, by the way, do plastic LED one, not glass. Um, but uh, <laughs> let's just get that clear. Uh, here's this fluorescent bulb. Uh, what do you think about this? Yeah. Uh, so, um, but, uh, you know, you can get a plastic LED light bulb and let the child touch it to, to feel it, to get an idea of it. Uh, that, now that has turned into a manipulative. That is something that you are now giving them uh, a representation. Uh, what about Jesus teaching the parable about paying taxes? Render to Caesar what is Caesar's. Render to God what is God. You can get a big picture that you print out online of a penny. Uh, well, that's that's cool. You can do that. That's, that's not a bad thing. A manipulative would be now I'm going to get some loose change from my house. And I'm going to let you touch it or maybe put your hand in a, a loose change. Uh, and be able to look at it, to feel it, to uh, kind of put your fingers it through it, see how it feels. Uh, grab a handful, put it in your pocket. No, don't do that. But, uh, um, of course, nowadays you actually have to have change uh, because most people don't have loose change uh, around the house. But, uh, but that would be, that would be what, a basic idea of what a manipulative would be. It's not just the object lesson, hey, kids, here's what it is. But, hey, kids, now you see what this is. How does it feel? Tell me how it feels. Tell me. Uh, you know, depending on what it is, how it tastes, you know, and work through the senses in that way. But speaking of the senses, we ask ourselves, what are the senses? And I feel like we were drilled with this from a very young age, aren't we? What the senses are. And, and the basic five senses we're all aware of, sight, sound, smell, taste, and touch. And the more of those senses that we can integrate into a lesson, the more you're going to get people to understand. There are times at church and I don't do it as often, I feel like, as I used to, but sometimes I would do uh, certain things with people at the front. They would hold up pieces of paper or something like that as a way to try to illustrate something that uh, may be a more s difficult spiritual concept if I'm just talking about it out loud. But if you're able to see it represented uh, in, in a way up front, it's, it's uh, more helpful. It's a physical uh, representation. There, there's senses that are being, are being uh, used. Uh, but there's also other senses as well. And there's a lot of different talk about this, and there's just understanding about this, opening up a little bit about it. But Ashley alluded to this just a little while ago, uh, the vestibular sense, um, how that relates to the inner ear and such. There's a lot we don't know about it, uh, but we do know that it's real, and, and we don't know why there are times AJ needs to spin. Uh, talking about spinning like he can spin for five minutes. Guess who's the one who spins him for five minutes? Uh, sometimes it's me, and I grab him, I go around, and after about 30 seconds, I feel sick. And you go, more, more, one more. more. Time, like, one more time, one more time. Spin yourself. I don't care. You know, it's like, I can't. Daddy Daddy needs to lay down for a while. So uh, that's just, uh, but that's the vestibular. Do we understand it completely? No, but it, but it is real. And then she had um, uh, mentioned as well spatial awareness, um, the sense of personal space. You know, we talk sometimes about our bubbles. You know, we have bubbles, don't we? We know not to really enter into someone's bub bubble unless it's socially acceptable. Uh, to enter into someone's bubble, uh, but there are times, maybe even at church, uh, there's someone that, uh, the person that always gets too close, um, and uh, I know a pastor, if I was to name him, you would, you would, you would laugh because you know, but every time you talk to him, he'd shake your hand, but he would have to shake it down like this because he was right here at your, <laughs> at your face, but actually because he was about 6'3", six, 6'4", six, it was kind of not, but he'd uh -huh. shake your hand down like this, and he was right there, and you're kind of just talking to him, and you're kind of... <laughs> edging back a little bit, edging back a little bit. Um, but sometimes spatial awareness uh, can be uh, I, having trouble understanding that uh, Diane illustrated very well a little while ago. That if I was to close my eyes, I can tell the distance just kind of from reaching around uh, and understanding. And sometimes that's difficult. So uh, what we use all of these things for is to bridge the gap uh, that where there's uh, sensory uh, difficulties that we're able to use some of these things to help get across the teaching of the word of God to these young people so that we're able to, to bridge that gap. So meeting the needs of the senses is important because children respond differently to stimuli. And this is true for everyone, but especially for those uh, who uh, have these difficulties. <clears throat> Sometimes signals can get mixed up uh, before they're processed. And there's a couple different ways that can be. Uh, there's hypersensitivity. There's hypersensitivity. Uh, we talked about this before. I think you were talking about this before, Diane. Uh, hypersensitivity of lights, you know, the lights where to you and I, uh, it would be normal lighting, but for someone that will be very bright. Think about those who maybe deal with migraines. Uh, what's the first thing that they talk about is that dealing with the light. They have to be in a dark room. Why? Because did the light change? No, the way they process the light has changed because of uh, the difficulty they're having with the migraine. 
uh, smells. Uh, you know, to some, uh, you know, smell is just a wonderful thing. To some, it can be difficult. There are some who have difficulties uh, with certain scents, even what we would consider to be good smells. Uh, they can sometimes have difficulty with. By the way, if you have an older church building, that's one of the things sometimes you have to be careful about is to make sure uh, some of the scents of a uh, hundred years of church services uh, are uh, are overcome. And so uh, that can be an issue. Uh, sounds, uh, being able to deal with a song service, being able to deal with a choir, uh, being able to deal with the noise of traffic, uh, any of those things can be a difficulty. And AJ sometimes has to deal with that hypersensitivity to sounds where uh, I remember when he was about five years old, and I need to watch my time uh, so I don't steal all of your time, but... Uh, uh, it is, uh, he's about five years old and we went to Chuck E. Cheese. Say no more. All right. Yeah. The first mistake was we went to Chuck E. Cheese and, uh, <laughs> we went in and, uh, what is it? Lights. It sounds, it's music that has no business being turned up as loud as it is. I'm having trouble with it. I don't want to be there. And AJ was in agony. And I, I, I believe he was physically in pain by what he was experiencing. And I thought we were giving him a nice day out. It was raining. We were in Florida. And uh, uh, my, my mom was having some very major health issues. And so we were down there. We are just trying to do something for the day to get everyone's mind off everything. We didn't understand what was going on. So he would have been four at this point or three. And, and it, was the, it, was the wor it was the worst idea. Well, a couple weeks ago or a couple months ago, we were on vacation. And, uh, and you were needing to rest. So I took all the kids out. And I said, hey, let's go. Uh, McDonald's has this big play place in Orlando, the biggest play place in the world. And it was the biggest play place in the world before COVID uh, because uh, it was closed. Uh, you couldn't go into it uh, for that reason. I was like, okay, what do we do? There's a Chuck E. Cheese across the street. <laughs> and PTSD started kicking in for me uh, immediately going back to that. I was twitching. It was awful. And, uh, but but this, is, this is what what we did. We had headphones in the car. We had an iPad in the car. And I said, and I asked him if we could go in there. I kind of explained it to him a little bit. He knows what Chuck E. Cheese is now. And uh, interestingly enough, he had seen some videos online of, of kids going to Chuck E. Cheese, modeling behavior of going into so he could kind of mimic what he saw online. And he went in there. And, you know, after a few minutes, he actually took the headphones off and was playing. Now, I took the headphones and I put them on because I thought, <laughs> if you're not going to use hey, if you're not gonna use these, maybe I could use them for a little while. Daddy, Daddy's going to go take a nap, all right? But uh, so that's what, what happened. Uh, so that's hypersensitivity. And so some of these things can help with that. But there's also hyposensitivity uh, as well on the other end, hyposensitivity. Um, and that is a lack of response. That's the stimuli does not give the response that you're looking for. For instance, uh, maybe a lack of understanding of, of pain. Uh, a child that could put their hand on something that's hot and not understand. One of the first things I remember, not one of the first things, but one of the things we taught in ABA what well, we taught, Ashley taught, uh, was, uh, hey, is the stove hot or is it cool? And to be able to go through the steps of learning how to do that, and because we can't take for granted that he would have the proper understanding of the stimuli. You say, boy, it would be nice not to feel pain. No, it wouldn't be. Can you imagine if you couldn't feel pain or you had the difficulty? Pain is God's way of telling us you're in danger a lot of times. And so if you couldn't feel pain, you would be a mangled mess in two weeks. Uh, because of all the difficulties you would get yourself in. Uh, and so there's that lack of uh, response to pain, uh, to pressure, uh, a lack of taste. Uh, all of these things can be uh, part of hyposensitivity. But then also we're reminded that different children learn differently. But this is true of everyone. I feel like a lot of the things that we talk about is not just a special needs discussion. It's just a let's teach kids discussion or let's teach adults discussion. Uh, because I can tell you that when I preach, I look at people and they connect in different ways. Even as I was looking at some of these things here, uh, we have visual learners. One of the reasons on Wednesday night I do a little bit more teaching on Wednesday night, it's still preaching because I'm a preacher, but it's te teaching on Wednesday night, and we have notes for people to take, but I've started over the last few months to be able to put things on the television, just the main points. Now, I want to be careful about that because it ends up being more like, hey, I'm watching TV uh, instead of being at church, but if I just put the main points up there to reinforce, you know, point number one, point number two, it's a great way to help for those who are visual learners because now they're seeing it. I had the points up there a few weeks ago, and I saw uh, one lady in our church. Uh, she got saved a few years ago, and uh, she just took out her phone, and she just took a picture <laughs> of it right there. And you know what? I thought, uh, you know, there, there's that part he's like, why would you do that? But you know what? For her, she wanted to remember it. Like, she wanted to learn it. Well, am I going to be upset that she wants to learn? So it's like, well, go ahead and do it. Uh, that's fine as long as you, you know, that's, that's not a problem. Uh, auditory learners. There are some people... 
that just, they just learn by hearing. You know, that, that, that's great. Um, there, there is, uh, oh boy, uh, talk about practicing, uh, uh, kin, 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 kinesthetic, uh, kinesthetic learners. And so that's uh, K-I, uh, K-I-N-E-S-T-H-E-T-I-C. And after that, you can Google it, all right? Um, uh, uh, learners, uh, here's, yeah, I, I tried. Um, uh, but it's, it, it, tactile, they need to touch things. Uh, they need to get their hands on things. I should have just put hands on learners, but we're trying to do this the right way. Uh, but, uh, but there are some, yeah, there's some that they just need to learn by, you know, hey, you know, hey here's, here's how to bake bread. Here's a video about it. That's good for some. Uh, some need to know, hey, let me tell you how to make bread. And some need to learn by making bread. That's the... That learner right there. So, um, uh, so and then and then finally, reading and writing learners. We've got some in in our our uh, church that when I preach, they're note takers. They are note takers. I mean, they've got their books and they're writing it out. Some people don't. Uh, some some people do. Why? Because those notes are very helpful to them. It's not just that they want to follow up with it later. It actually keeps them engaged. It actually keeps them focused to be able to do so. If I take too many notes in church, I'm actually more engaged in the notes because I was an English teacher and because I write and now if the note's not right then I, I got to go back and like change the to make sure that the English is right and all that and, and b- before I know it I'm missing what's actually going on but for some it's their way of making sure they're plugged in and so these are all things we understand these things but yet we don't always apply them into our children's ministries as we should and so that's what these type of tools are all about so uh, we want to take a few moments and examine each of these three categories Got to show you some examples, some illustrations we have. Diane's going to show some of them to you. I'm going to go around and pass them around so you get to look at them hands-on uh, to be able to see what they are. But uh, Diane, this is your portion of the uh, uh, lesson, so take it away. All right. So you can do this. Okay. So not all sensory toys are created equal. Um, this is one of my son's favorite sensory toys. But can you imagine in a junior church how annoying that is when you're trying to teach and the kid is going like this? Okay, this is not a good junior church uh, um, fidget toy for while you're teaching a lesson. It's maybe a great fidget toy for during the song time or when there's more loud activity. Maybe the kid really needs, you know, there's some pressure involved in this. But just know that not all fidget toys are created equal. So think about that. Be, be mindful when you're choosing what fidget toys are available at certain times. And that would then also go to say, don't make all fidget toys available at all times. Have your toys that are specifically for lesson time in one box and have your toys that are specifically for more desensitizing in another box so that the child doesn't see their preferred toy and then be told you're not allowed to have it when you're offering the box, right? That's kind of... Cruel. <laughs> so, glitter, um, glitter sensory bottles are awesome. You can make these yourself. I'm actually going to hand out, um, when we're done, I'm going to hand out um, directions on how to make these yourself. Um, this is a glass bottle. You don't have to use a glass bottle. This is very durable. You can use plastic, but just be aware that if your kids are hard on them, um, you know, because they'll get into it. They'll squish them. They'll, you know, do all kinds of things that they can puncture. So just be aware of that. Um, super glue the lid shut. <laughs> Personal experience. Um, but these are awesome. You can put objects in them. So let's say you're teaching the days of creation. Well, you can put animals in here. You can put sea creatures in here. You could put little plants in here, you know, like plastic plants. And then that way while you're teaching the lesson, you know, the child's looking and it's a reinforcer for what you're teaching. It's really as limitless as your imagination of what you can use these for. But these are really nice because they're quiet. It's not really distracting. You may struggle with some of the other kids being like, ooh, you know. So in that case, just have the child sit more towards the back because then the other kids' eyes are facing front. They're not going to see what they're doing. Um, but uh, glitter um, glitter bottles are awesome. Um what else was I going to say? Putty. Putty is another good one. And putty you can make yourself too. I tried to show you things that you can make uh, because it, it can be cheaper, especially if you're just starting out and you don't necessarily have a budget. Um, so I have a recipe for, for putty. Um, you can use Play-Doh. 
Um, but Play-Doh can be a little problematic if you have carpeting and stuff like that. Whereas putty, this is basically cornstarch and lotion. It's not going to get like into your carpet like Play-Doh would. And the nice thing about making putty is that you can make it aromatherapy. Aroma therapy. Aromatherapy. I'm having trouble with words too. I've yeah. talked too much today. Um, so I have um, in the handout that I'm going to have, I have some suggestions of like essential oils that I like to use um, that have a calming effect. Um, of course, always be careful. Always check with parents in case there's some sensitivities there. Um, but there are Plant Therapy is a company that I buy oils from, and they have a child safe line. So, because not all oils are safe for all ages. So, just a little caveat there. But um, now we'll say, <clears throat> just for hygiene purposes, um, you may want to keep. Let's say you have two or three little special needs kids in your class. You may want them to each have their own little tub of things um, that are not washable. So like putty, you can't wash it. You can't clean it, obviously. So that little tub would be Johnny's little tub of putties. And he can have whatever he wants out of that tub. And then it goes back in there at the end. But you're not worrying about germs being spread, all those kind of things. You can also use kinetic sand to yes. at, at times. So, uh, but funnily enough... Not all kids that like putty like kinetic sand. AJ hates kinetic sand. Yeah. So again, know your know your kids. Kinetic sand, if you're not aware, and we we actually have some of that too. It feels like sand, but it it kind of sticks together, and and it almost feels a little moist. But then when you take it out of your hand and put it back in the pile, your hands are completely dry. So actually, do, do we have that out here? I don't have it. I don't didn't know we had any. We do have some. Oh well, go, go get it. Yeah. I'll be right back. It's kind of it's very cool. Yeah. That's what we're um, so like we said earlier in Ashley's session, you can have some fidget toys that are, this is a really good example, that's a focus tool. So during, did you get the same one? <laughs> I love that one. <laughs> so this is like a, like a stress ball even or a squishy ball or whatever. But these are perfect for during lesson time because they're small, they're discreet. The child can, especially if you have a child like, for example, AJ doesn't really know that he has autism. He doesn't know that he maybe stands out to other people, so he doesn't care. But you might have a student that's sensitive about their um, disability or their needs. And so you want to be considerate about that when you offer them sensory toys. Maybe you need to do it in a discreet way to where it's something that they know they have access to and they can get it, but it's not embarrassing them in front of your whole class because not all kids are going to be equal there. So, um, you know, we're... In some ways, it's a blessing. AJ's completely oblivious, really. He, um, and that might change, but... So I'm going to pass this around. Um, I know not everyone may be comfortable sticking your hand in where someone else has, but I promise no kids have sneezed in this at least in a week. So whatever's in here is good. No, I'm just going we'll, to... We'll, we'll take that out of the recording. But um, uh, if you'd like to, you're more than welcome. If, if you've never seen it before, it's sometimes called moon sand, uh, kinetic sand. Uh, there, there's not really another substance quite like it. It's yeah. very strange, but uh, it's it's... As you touch it, for a lot of people, it's just kind of intriguing and you keep wanting yeah. to touch it. But oddly enough, Diane's right. AJ, he doesn't, doesn't like, like it. He doesn't like Play Doh either. And, uh, he doesn't like Play Doh, but the no. putty, he does. And so it's just getting to learn uh, your learners and getting yeah. to know what they like. So, and I will say, kinetic sand is probably not one that I would offer during a lesson time, but it would be one that would be great for that de escalation corner where you have like a little tub and they, you know, they'll like watch it fall and it's just kind of that calming, you know. Um, sensation there so not necessarily a good one for lesson time but a good one for another corner um, let me see in my notes some of this we've covered already um, I think that's all I have for sensory toys um, this is a chewer again a chewer would be something that I would put in an individual child's box unless you can um, disinfect it but I mean you really have a chewer they're really gonna beat it up I mean they're gonna go to town on it and um, sometimes it's even just because of pressure. Like AJ has um, a condition called estation tubal defect. And because he has a small head, all of the tubes connecting his ears and his sinuses are small. So if he's stuffy, that's a lot of pressure. And so chewing on something, he'll really go to town if we can tell, oh, you know, he's feeling pressure, extra fluid buildup or whatever. Um, but this is probably a kind of toy that I would keep in a child's own little kind of box just, just for um, hygiene purposes. Um, but we have some other good ones. Poppets are great. Um, I actually like these poppets better for a lesson time because, again, 
it's kind of concealed. It's not, I mean, you can do big poppets, but they can be kind of, they can be noisy. Um, AJ absolutely loves poppets. Um, and again, have your kid come in, have them play with the box, figure out what their preferred items are. Um, cause each kid will be different. Before you move on to the next section, uh, you can buy a lot of this on Amazon, yes. correct? Yeah. You can almost buy dollar store, of, even though yeah. you can get tons of stuff at the dollar store. It might not last as long. Um, but dollar store is good. This is a really good one. If you have some children really need pressure, they'll seek pressure. Um, I'm not sure how, how else to describe it, but like sometimes if AJ is just really <laughs> ramped up, um, you know, he'll, we'll pinch his fingers. He likes that feeling, but obviously as a teacher, you're not going to want to go around pinching all your kids. So something like this, it just provides, if you feel this, it provides that kind of stretchy pressure. And so sometimes kids will um, gravitate towards those because they like those. All right. But basically sensory toy, you can make almost anything a sensory toy. And there's so much information online. I've given you some resources in the back of where you can purchase some. The, we're going to hand out um, a, a research paper on why fidget toys are important to kind of back up what Ashley said. But on the back, there's a whole list of different ones um, that you can get. You can just do all of this if you want because that's all of the – there's three different things in there. <clears throat> all right, let's move on to visuals. Um, I am a teacher by trade, <laughs> I guess. I graduated um, – with an associate's degree in um, church education, and then I got my bachelor's in early childhood education. So I love anything teachery. <laughs> it's kind of my wheelhouse, and I love visuals. But I understand that not everybody is um, as excited about them <laughs> as I might be. <clears throat> so one of the things I might suggest to you, if you feel completely overwhelmed about visuals, maybe find someone in your church that likes to do graphic design-y type things. And they are maybe not comfortable working in a children's ministry, but this could be a ministry for them to make all the visuals and all the graphics for your class. It doesn't necessarily mean you have to do it, but it could be an opportunity for someone in the church to have a ministry in the children's ministry without actually being involved in the classroom, if that makes sense. So the first thing I want to talk about is um, your visual schedule. So this is ours. If you go into our junior church classroom right now, it looks like we don't know what we're talking about because none of this is up there because it's all here for me to show you. But this is our visual schedule. <coughs> Excuse me. And we put both of these up because a lot of our kids like seeing the completion. They like moving, you know, and they don't have to do it. The teacher can do it. But they like seeing it move from one side to the other because then it's all done. But you don't have to. You can just do um, this one. You can just take them off and put them down. I would recommend removing them because, again, that's that visual, like, oh, we're done with that. Now it's time to move on, and it helps with that transition. Thank you, sir. Um, but the neat thing that you can also do, and this is especially beneficial if you have a decent-sized classroom, um, is you can take your exact same visual, and I got this in the back of your packet, I have the uh, website where I bought this from. You just buy it, print it, cut it, laminate it, you're good. And it's just on there with Velcro dots. Um, but you can get the same visual and make it a little bit bigger and then put it on um, just a little ring and have your helper wear it on a lanyard around their neck. Now, why is this important? Okay, if I'm in the classroom with AJ and my job as the helper is to make the teacher be able to do the teaching, right? She's there to teach the Word of God. He's there to teach the Word of God. My job is to help them be successful and not be distracted by what's going on, and my job is to help the kids not be distracted. So I can be sitting with my little learner who has special needs, and maybe they're obsessing about the game later. When's the time for the game? When is the time for the game? When is the time for the game? Are we going to play the game? Are we going to do that? Are we going to play the bubbles? Are we going to do, you know, this? And this is what we deal with. So she can sit there or he can sit there, and he can say, look, right now, remember, remember right now we're on prayer time. We're not on, we're not on game time yet. It's okay. We're on prayer time. And it's just that one-to-one -one pairing of that reminder to help them stay calm, to help them self-regulate without the teacher from the front saying, no, now Johnny, remember, 
we're on prayer time right now. And there's nothing wrong necessarily in doing that if you need to. But this is just another way to make it where it's a little bit more concealed, a little bit more considerate of the child. And it's not disruptive for the, the, the flow of thought for the teacher when she's teaching. So I really like that. The other thing we have are our classroom rules. And my husband is a really big uh, fan of the five finger rule. Does anyone know the five finger rule? I don't remember them anymore. Oh, Go ahead, do it. Oh yeah, it's, it's already done. Uh, hands in your lap, feet on the floor, sitting up straight, no talking, and listen to the person who's talking, who happens to be me. So. And the finger rule is awesome because you have a hand, right? And you can run through those. The kids, AJ loves associating a number with the rule, and he now he has church rules, and I only have to say the number now. I'll be like, AJ, number four, and he knows, oh, that means I have to whisper because we've worked on it for so long. But the one hard thing about the five-finger rule is in some ways we're setting up some of our learners to not be successful because if you have a kid and the, the rule is hands in your lap? Hands in your lap. Okay, well, how do you put your hands in your lap if you're using a fidget toy, right? So the kid is automatically now disobeying the rule. And, which is fine. You can have the exception. But then the rest of your class is going to be like, well, how come Johnny doesn't have to have his hands in his lap? And I don't want to have my hands in my lap. Can you tell I've taught junior church? No. I'm not bitter about it at all. <laughs> so it's nice if you can word your rules in a way that are inclusive. Okay. And inclusive is a buzzword in Christian circles because generally it's associated with things that we don't agree with and we don't want to use the word inclusive. Inclusive is not a bad word. And it's just about making everybody feel welcome in the environment that you are providing, okay? So these are our classroom rules. Eyes are looking. Now, why is this important? You don't want to say, look at me, because AJ will not look at you. If he's stressed and if he's overwhelmed, his eyes are diverted. So when I'm talking to AJ, I will say, AJ, eyes looking. And that means he's giving me his attention. He won't look at me, but he, his attention is directed towards me. Does that make sense? But the other kids in the room, their eyes are going to be on me. So it's a nice way to have the rule where everybody has the same rule, um, but it's not um, a kid getting away with something. Uh, mouth is quiet. Okay, It doesn't say no talking. It says mouth is quiet because AJ may need to ask for a break. He may need to request. He may have a need that he needs to say. So this means he can ask that, but he has to do it quiet. And he knows that because we've worked on those rules. You can also have a chart in your classroom um, that has volume levels, like um, showing you where you can use certain volumes of voice. And that can sometimes be helpful. You can put a little slider so kids know right now we're using the mouse voice. And then later we can use the lion voice. And it's just a nice way to remind kids what time, how we're using our voice. Um, hands and feet to myself. So not still, but to myself. I'm not messing with Susie and I'm not messing with Sarah. My hands are to myself, but I'm able to use them if I need to for self-calming. Ears are listening. That's an important one. And then raise your hand. Um, because we don't want kids just yelling out over the top of us. So getting, getting the teacher's attention. If you're working one-on-one -on -one with a student, you know, Miss Ashley, blah, blah, blah. And AJ knows. AJ can do all of those things. This is very doable. It will not happen the first time you put the rules up, <laughs> but it is very doable. And then the last thing in visuals that I want to talk about is I think it's imperative to have a visual reward system. Um, and I think it's imperative to have uh, a visual reward system that is um, earnable. So what do I mean by that? We use green, yellow, red. Um, Flat, uh, traffic light. So if, if, our, if our kids don't obey one of the rules, they get a warning. Hey, remember rule number one, eyes on me. If I have to talk to you about it again, then you're going to go on yellow. Okay, so little Miss Susie does it again. She goes on yellow. She is allowed to earn her green back. And the reason why that's important is because if your student loses green in the first two minutes, which they probably will when you first implement this, <laughs> why would they obey the rest of the time? They've already, they're already on yellow, and then they're going to get to red, and then it's like over. You may as well send them back out to mom and dad, right? The point of this is not for you to have control. The point of this is for your student to be successful. 
And I think that's a switch in our minds that we have to make in a classroom setting. It's not about me being bossy and being in control. It's about what can I do to help my student have the most successful experience in my class, which in turn gives you control of the class. Um, but if we switch the way we think about it, we handle it different. Give a, give a 30 second plug. And I don't know if your church does this, but uh, I used to do it. And I found it pretty unsuccessful. The quiet seat prize, <laughs> something underneath one of your chairs. <laughs> and if you're quiet, you know, it, it, we're going to see whose chair it's under. And if you were quiet during class, and, and it's a way of trying to control a large group of people. Uh, but here's the problem. I've never found, I mean, if, if let's say uh, Johnny has been disruptive the whole class. And it just so happens that the prize under his chair, right. are you going to say, no, you can't have that, right. and embarrass him in front of the class? So you end up giving it to him to try to not make him feel bad, and you're actually reinforcing the behavior right. that you're trying to not have take place. Mm -hmm. And so you're much better having a different philosophy yeah. than doing that. And I used to do it. We had one guy who, who said, uh, who, who had a, 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 I think it was a $5 bill, and he said, no, I'm, I'll rip it if, if the <laughs> class is left. And one, and one time, he just did. He just ripped it. And uh, and one of the kids, he's like fifth or sixth grade, goes, "That's a federal crime, um, uh, ripping them." <laughs> well, yeah, it's, like, it's well, only one person disobeyed today, and that's the guy that ripped the five dollar bill. So, um, but uh, but yeah, so th this is much more targeted, and mm -hmm. the whole point is not, well, I'm going to make my point and be yellow, and they'll learn their lesson. It's well, let's help them to get back to where they need to be because they'll be in a better place. We'll all be in a better place right. for that, and give them incentive to get back. And it's showing grace, which is a biblical principle that the Lord shows us every single day. Um, I will say the most important thing about your visual reward system is the reward needs to be instantaneous. They must leave class that day with the reward. Whatever you decided the reward is, whether it's a sticker, whether it's a treasure box, whether whatever it is, it needs to be tangible and it needs to be something that they leave with. Otherwise, what's the point, right? Um, Sometimes when we work with parents in the home, um, we've done some parenting um, classes with parents and, and we'll encourage them to have like a, you know, step one, two, you know, after five days you've won kind of your prize thing. And that's good in your home. But in church, they need to leave with the prize. And, the, and it needs to be something that they highly value, which does not mean it has to be expensive. Our treasure chest is full of stuff from the dollar store. But it's stuff that kids find cool and exciting and something that they want to earn. And I love when the kids come out, Mom, look what I got! And Mom's usually like, oh my goodness, we got more junk coming home. You know? yeah, that's it. <laughs> but it's got to be something that they're excited about. So we got five minutes. So we're going to go through manipulatives now and get you to lunch. Yeah, I took about 30 seconds. <laughs> he oh. told me it's okay. I'll, only, I'll be 10 minutes. I'll okay. be 10 minutes. I'll take another 30 seconds. Right. So, no. <laughs> okay. Manipulatives are probably... Um, the one that we use the least, okay? I think most of you know how to use visuals in your classrooms. Most of you know how to use rewards in your classrooms. But manipulatives are so vitally important and they're an underused tool. And um, a manipulative can honestly be as simple as a kid coloring while you're teaching class. Um, we had a little boy, um, they don't come to our church anymore, but we had a little boy who has autism and he was, under di he was undiagnosed at the time and he none of the teachers could get him to to participate in class. He wasn't like he wasn't naughty, he wasn't disruptive, he wasn't he just would sit there and do nothing. And he wouldn't answer questions, he wouldn't engage, he wouldn't do anything. So I said, "Let me come in the class." And um so I went in and I taught one day and th this seriously this is the Lord. The and this is why prayer is so important because the Lord gave me this idea. And I was like, "Jacob, Will you draw Miss Diane a picture of what I'm talking about today? Would you do that for me? I'd like to see you draw me a picture. And because he loved to, I knew he loved to color. And so I gave him a blank piece of picture, a blank piece of paper and some crayons. And I think we were talking about Jacob and Esau. And he left class for the first time that day and went and told his mom and dad the entire story that we learned about in class that day from simply coloring a picture while I was talking. You know, that's not disruptive, guys. That doesn't cost money. It's, it's, it's not some newfangled weird thing. It was simply giving that kid the opportunity to engage his brain in a way where he could learn. And it was simple. It was a piece of paper. All right, really quickly, these are awesome manipulatives. Uh, again, I've put this in the back of your folder where you can purchase these from. But these are called interactive books. And this lady is wonderful. She has a whole bunch of Bible stories already on her website. And if you're teaching a Bible story that she doesn't have in her 
uh, on her website already. If you email her, she'll make you one. But these are just great little ways. And you can give this to the child while you're teaching the story, right? So the aide is sitting there with them, and you're talking about Noah, okay? So here we are. You're talking Noah, 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 Noah. And then who, who was a good man? Noah was a good man. And he puts Noah on the little square, okay? It's really simple, but it keeps the child's attention. It keeps them engaged. It keeps them. Now, I'll tell you, the next week, AJ won't remember what the story was about. That's okay. That's not the goal, right? The goal is to foster a love for church, for a love for Sunday school, a love for the Bible. And in time, the memory part will come with it. So you can pass those around if you want. And then this one, this is thanks to our dear sweet Ashley. This is one of my favorites. This is, have you all heard of the wordless book? You know, teaching children the gospel through the wordless book. This is an interactive wordless book. And so it goes through all of the colors of the gospel and it has the little manipulatives that you pull off to put here. AJ can do this. He can tell me the gospel. He doesn't understand it yet, but he can tell me the gospel. And that's the first step, right? With any young child, they need to be able to tell it, and then they will understand it. And so this is a magnificent tool. I have tried to contact the lady who makes this. She's not contacted me back yet, but I can't find these on her website anymore for sale. So if you would like one of these, if you email me, my email's in the packet, I will email you the link to download it. Um, I wouldn't do that if she was still selling them because I don't think that's ethical. But um, I've tried to get in contact with her. Her, her teacher pay teacher store does not have it anymore, so I don't know if there was some reason why. So I'm happy to give these to you, but these are fantastic. And the neat thing is, if you have lost families coming and you send this home with their, with their, their kid, then the kid's going to do it with mom and dad. And you're reinforcing the gospel to mom and dad, too. So um, that's wonderful. We're actually going to... Were you going to give this one away? Or you didn't do it? No, we haven't done that. Okay. So, yeah, we'll, we'll figure that out. But, yeah. So um, some other quick ideas of manipulatives are um, we use a... Um, Junior Church Curriculum from Bogard Press. That's also in your packet. And Bogard Press has basically done a lot of the work for you, and they naturally include manipulatives into their curriculum. So one example was I was teaching a Bible story about um, Elijah when he was discouraged and he was by the brook Kidron and the ravens brought him food. Well, the curriculum had all the little characters. It had Elijah. It had a river. I think it had a tree, it had food and ravens, and you cut them out and you put them on little popsicle sticks and they were little puppet figures. And I used them to tell the story and then I gave them to the kids and the kids helped me tell the story and the kids were involved. That's a manipulative. It's getting the kids' hands and bodies involved with the telling of the story. And that will help your kids, especially your kids that are kinesthetic learners. Um, Another one, this was Kaylee, my daughter Kaylee. She is really good at manipulatives. She thinks of stuff all the time. And I think it's because that's how her brain thinks. So they were doing, um, oh, she was doing the story of the widow who had a little bit of oil and a little bit of flour. And Elijah said, can you make me a cake first? And then, so she brought in the things to make the cake. And all the kids had a little oil, a little flour. And while she was telling the story, they were making it and they were doing their little breads. And then she had made some at home and baked it. And then the kids all got to eat it. It's, it's, it's stuff that we can all think about. It just takes that little bit extra. And if your curriculum doesn't already have it built in, it might take you just sitting and thinking and ask the Lord, Lord, help me. Help me think of a good manipulative to use you know, sometimes if you've been teaching junior church and Sunday school for a long time, you can do it without thinking, yeah. right? Oh, yeah. We know the Bible stories. We've heard them growing up. We've taught them a hundred times, and we can kind of just skate in, teach the story, and skate out. But you know, we need to take the time to pray and ask the Lord to help us. What can I do for my children? Call them by name. Lord, what can I do this week to help AJ learn this truth from your word? And the Lord will give you the ideas that you need. Well, that's a lot of practical help there. That's very, very good. So just to finish on the next page, and I'm going to give this to you in 30 seconds. These things are not new. These things are not new. And it's funny. Uh, they've been available to the public for years. Ashley mentioned that she'd go to conventions and there'd be fidget toys everywhere. About 20 years ago, it was stress balls. Mm -hmm. uh, if you remember, I'd say squishies. I mean, it said people would, you know, 
uh, you know, I was so stressed that like I broke it. You know, it just uh, oh, it's gone. You know, it. Uh, but uh, that's uh, the stress ball is an example. Uh, chewing gum, chewing gum. You know, some people need to chew gum. It helps them to focus. Uh, that's a possibility. Uh, you know, years ago, yo-yos, people would, uh, you know, now yo-yos are kind of like, it was a fad for sure, but there's a while where people would just do it just to, as a way to calm themselves. Um, but we do all kinds of other things, uh, chewing nails, fiddling with hands, fiddling with hair, all those kind of things. And, uh, these are all things that, uh, are done and, uh, you know, stress balls, chewing gum, yo-yos are more socially acceptable. Um, although not so much the yo-yos anymore, but you don't understand what I'm talking about, but these things are, are mainstream just because maybe you're not familiar with them and they're great tools to be able to use to help you all right we're going to break for lunch and we're going to start again at one o'clock so i hope you'll join us again come ready with some questions all right because it'll be a very short question and answer time if you don't have any <laughs> questions for us all right so write them down if you'd like if you're comfortable just asking them out loud you can do that too but we'd sure love to see them and that way we can prepare for them and uh but uh, otherwise we're looking forward to seeing you at uh, one o'clock all right you're dismissed